welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Raw After Summer Slam Season 10. It is episode 23. I'm excited. I apologize for the two-week hiatus on making wrestling content. I've been trying to plan out the class part script a little bit more. Trying to iron that out, get out on the Minecraft series, and also really take the time to plan out how the road to WrestleMania uh, for Season 10 is going to work. And I'm still trying to iron it out, but I'm starting to put the pieces together. It's just taken me some time, and I apologize for that. As you saw before, that is the result of SummerSlam. And unfortunately, I don't have time, or I did not have time to make the Clash of Champions custom card, but we'll do something uh, still for that at the end of the video on what's confirmed. With that said, ladies and gentlemen, one more thing before we get into Raw, the ratings war heats up even more. I have never seen this before in the history of Universe Mode. NXT is breathing down the neck of Monday Night Raw. Raw with five championships for each season's ratings. SmackDown with two. NXT has never won and the margin grows smaller. So if you want NXT or SmackDown to win, leave a like on that on those videos more than Raw. So if you see Raw get more likes, try and surpass it or views as well to take the lead in the ratings as we're about to reach the halfway point in the series or the season. With all of that out of the way, let's get into Monday Night Raw as the show kicks off with this man making his in-ring return. Oh, it's Cole He returned at SummerSlam. It has been a long time, almost half a season since we have seen him grace the ring. And it has been almost a full season since he has been fully active on the roster. He's been out with a knee injury. The first ever custom wrestler to become a five time world champion. That's 41 episodes, four universal title reigns, one WWE title reign. He's a former intercontinental champion three-time United States Champion at 17 episodes, two-time Hardcore Champion and two-time Raw Tag Team Champion, 13 title reigns to its name, 80 episodes as a champion, ranked 22nd all-time, and I guarantee you a future Hall of Famer. He made event in WrestleMania 5 on the grandest stage of them all. Cole Lee, the Headhunter. One of the all-time greats since season one is back, ladies and gentlemen. It's great to see. Let's see what he has to say. Cold Lee comes down to the ring to kick off Raw, and he takes the microphone and asks the crowd if they missed him. Tells them that he missed them dearly. He missed this, the ring, performing in front of each and every one of them, whether they cheered him, whether they booed him. Because this is his life. He will bleed for this and he will press on. He may be old, but he still damn sure is gold. For he is the Colt 45. And every single man on Raw is ready to feel the bang. Whether they like it or not, they're going to have to be ready for it. He continues, though, and says that there is one goal he had in mind for a long time. It's been a long time, but he wants to be a six-time world champion. He spent quite a long period of time on the shelf and itching for a fight. He could go for the United States title to become a four-time champion. He could try and regain it after what happened at Mayhem, but he wants to press forward and aim for greater heights. Blake Daniels is a strong-willed and driven and dedicated opponent. Coley as the guaranteed opportunity at the world title. Why? Because he persevered through his knee injury, put off surgery to compete in the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal at WrestleMania 9 to win it. It's delayed, but he wants to invoke it. His opportunity at the world title at Clash of Champions before anything else. However, he's interrupted by AJ Styles, who comes down to the ring. Styles informs him that he's already got one person tying his record for most world title reigns at six. 
he won't have anyone else being added to it without going through him first. AJ Styles proceeds to challenge Coley to a match next to Raw. Put off your title opportunity from Clash of Champions and put it on the line against AJ Styles next to Raw. The winner will get a shot at the belt on episode 31, the following pay-per-view. And the one before Survivor Series. Coldly considers it for a few seconds and says that he'll accept the match and put his opportunity on the line instead. Next Raw. He won't be challenging for the belt at Clash of Champions. This might throw a wrench in Brock Lesnar's plans, but he offers out his hand AJ Styles, who doesn't shake it, and says, I'm the only six-time world champion as far as he's considered before leaving the ring. Coley salutes the fans, says that it's great to see them before leaving. Afterwards, the Usos are interviewed and asked about the Undisputed Era versus Sanders and Brayden McLaughlin uh, tonight. And the question implies, the question when it was asked implies that somehow it would be the number one contendership match. The Usos laugh at this and say that neither team are worthy contenders. Now that the OC is out of the way and locked out, Locked down? This means that the Usos should get to pick the, their opponents for Clash of Champions. The interviewer asks who they would want for the show, and the Usos refuse to save, saying that they'll speak to Brock Lesnar right now. So we don't get an answer. But we do get an opening match, and it's Daniel Bryan versus Roderick Strong. A hard-hitting opening match for the hardcore title, but Daniel Bryan still retains. After the match, Daniel Bryan takes the microphone and declares that Raw is soft, SmackDown Live is soft, and that NXT tag match before SummerSlam was a fluke. CM Punk got pinned, but Daniel Bryan didn't. He tells the hard camera that he's guaranteed to be at Clash of Champions and looks forward to walking over the winner at the NXT show. In the end, they'll tear each other apart just to fall to the might of Daniel Bryan. He drops the mic and leaves. He's referring to Will Madison and Dax Devonair who will be fighting on NXT, where these two NXT talents have the opportunity to go to Clash of Champions, whoever wins the match on NXT. So tune in there if you want to find out who will be added to the Hardcore Championship match. Roderick Strong is then shown heading to the back and looks frustrated. Kevin Owens, who's been leading the Undisputed Era, comes up to him and says that he's always felt that Fish was the weakest between them. Now he's not sure. Strong looks offended by this and has a stare down with Owens. Kevin continues though and explains that he believes that tonight was a fluke for Roderick Strong. Owens holds up a SmackDown Live ticket and says that he has an idea. Strong is confused by this but Owens wraps his arm around him and takes him away from the cameras urging them to uh, leave them alone before their tag team match. And the tag team match we do eventually go to after commercial break. Braden McLaughlin and Jeff Sanders taking on Bobby Fish and Kevin Owens. Fish gets pinned and Sanders and Braden win the match before proceeding to flip off the audience. Getting in their faces, even Braden McLaughlin grabbing a soda from one of the fans and throwing it in his face before they get on the mic and challenge the Usos for the Raw Tag Team titles at Clash of Champions. Instead, though, the Beast Incarnate, the chairman of, or sorry, not the chairman, the GM of Raw comes out and announces that the Usos have already requested a set of opponents for, the, for them to face at Clash of Champions. He announces that the Usos will face the Street Profits instead. Braden McLaughlin and Sanders call that injustice, while Lesnar tells them to prove to him that they deserve a shot. Prove to me. And he leaves the angry and irate pair in the ring. As they're left to figure out how they're gonna get a re or an opportunity, not a rematch. Owens heads to the back and he tells Fish that he that he's already been unsure of Fish's confidence and dedication. But now he doesn't know whether either of them are dedicated enough to the Undisputed Era. He's giving Strong a second chance, but this was Fish's second chance. 
Fish is offended by this, but Strong gets between them. Strong reassures Owens that everything will be executed as planned on SmackDown. Owens warns him that it better be, or else it's time for the Undisputed Era to end. Owens walks off and leaves the duo looking at each other. Frustration. Afterwards, ladies and gentlemen, we go to matchup number three. It is going to be Bobby Lashley going up against Nathaniel. In a United States number one contendership match, the winner will face Rogue Killer at Clash of Champions for the United States Championship. We actually do go to that match next. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, matchup number three of the evening. It is Nathaniel versus Lashley. Lashley opens up with a blasting clothesline, wiping him out there, and a leaping elbow. He pours on the offense against Nathaniel, trying to shut him down. These two heavy hitters, both looking for a monumental opportunity, a challenging road killer for the United States title. Both men look to shut the other out. Let's go for the United States title. Nathaniel, one-time Universal Champion in 18 episodes. Two-time U.S. Champion at 7. And a former NXT Champion at 9. And while Lashley, two-time U.S. Champion at 31 episodes. And a four-time Hardcore Champion at 27. Both men decorated their own ways. Maybe hasn't found the most success that either wants, but they are pursuing success as Lashley's got him trapped in the corner. No, Nathaniel turns the tide, turns it around, and lands. A series of elbow strikes in the corner before going to the top row for a moonsault. Lashley has it well scouted, but there's a double moonsault from Nathaniel. Cover two, kick out and two near fall. Both men have the patented spear as some of their hard-hitting finishing moves. Let to see who can connect and who's as superior to the others. As Nathaniel lays it in with the forearm strikes the combos. Landing! A rolling thunder there. Nathaniel feeling the momentum has gone into his favor as he pours it on with a two-handed choke bomb to Nathaniel, or sorry, to Lashley. But Lashley turns the tide around quick as a cat and looking for the clothesline, but no, Nathaniel turns it right around and shuts that momentum down before limb targeting like a surgeon in the hospital against the arm of Lashley, pinpointing potentially a target to bruise and batter as he goes to the top rope. A high risk maneuver by Nathaniel, but he's willing to risk it all. Here it comes, oh my gosh, no. Missed the eclipse, Lashley. All he had to do was step aside and Nathaniel crashed and burned. And now, oh, dropping Nathaniel down upon his neck. Lashley taking control. Gonna wait, stiff uppercut there. By Nathaniel turning the tide, springboard caught him with a kick to the side of the head. Lashley is rocked, Lashley is stunned as Nathaniel sights him up, here it comes, no! Lashley counters, picks him up for the military press, but no, Nathaniel counters. Lashley turns right around and is gone! He's gone into the standing muscle buster! Oh, it connects! Lashley's neck is rattled cover. No, not even a one count as Lashley perseveres and powers through the pain to stand tall as oh, he gets to his feet. Picks up Nathaniel. Military press power slam. Cover to win the match. One, two, kick out at two near fall. One second away. From getting an opportunity, the United States title is now Lashley sizing him up. Here comes a spear. No, Nathaniel Lee frogs over. Oh, no. And Lashley blasts him with a clothesline. Cover one, two. And now he wraps him in a chin lock. 
trying to suffocate him. But he couldn't get his bicep underneath the throat of Nathaniel. These two going back and forth, clashing back and forth. As now Lashley, Irish whipping him. Oh! There is a scoop slam. Now look at the power, look at the power, running power slam there, cover, two, kick out at two, as Lashley is in full control of this match, he is pouring on the offense, but he's no Braun Strowman with the running power slams, but so nice, he'll go for it twice, a second time, oh, another running power slam. Oh, Nathaniel with the kick to the top of the head, flying knee, no, Lashley counters, puts him right back to the canvas. Lashley's been going for some hard hitting moves but still hasn't managed to put Nathaniel away but he is wearing him down successfully in my opinion both men are going to be gunning to try again for the spear as there's a gut wrench power bomb to Nathaniel kick to the top of the head Nathaniel sides it him up close line it's him no Lashley ducked it and now Nathaniel's tied up on the middle row doesn't know what to do he's trapped Lashley takes care of business. Lashley sizing him up, delivers an elbow right to the chest. And now, ladies and gentlemen, on your feet, here comes the end. Lashley, no way. Nathaniel sizes him up. No! Lashley sidestepped the spear, dodged it like a bullfighter. And it's Milena. Wow! As these two back and forth with the strikes after Lashley dodged the spear and there's a neck breaker connecting. Nathaniel is rocked. Lashley close line in the corner to put him away potentially. Here it comes. Lashley sizing him up for the spear. Will it connect? No. Nathaniel Lee frogs over yet again. Kick to the gun. Here it comes. Ladies and gentlemen, glorious DDT impacts on Lashley. Over to put him away. No, not even a one count. Lashley's still showing the heart, the resilience, and determination and fortitude to persevere and power through. As now Nathaniel sizing him up for the end. Here it comes. No, Lashley got him by the throat. One handed chop bomb. Straight to hell. And now Lashley has a prime opportunity. Pits him up. Back money drop there to Nathaniel. All rise, as now Lashley hits him with a Dominator, cover to go to Clash of Champions 2, 3, Bobby Lashley is the number one contender for the United States title. Lashley, the Almighty One, hits a thunderous Dominator upon Nathaniel to put him away for the win. Both men had such heart, such resilience, such fortitude, but in the end, only one man can stand tall, and that is Bobby Lashley, as he looks to become a three time United States champion in just four episodes. We got the Street Profits versus the Usos for the Raw Tag Team titles and now the United States title is booked for Clash of Champions. What's going to happen next? Well, stay tuned and find out. As Lashley, in the end, is victorious over Nathan. Strap yourselves in, ladies and gentlemen, because I'm going to try to have to get through these segments pretty quick. There's going to be three before the next match. Lashley, after the victory, gets on the mic and declares that Rogue Killer has been renting the U.S. title out for Lashley to take it back. At Clash of Champions, Lashley is going to take back what is rightfully his, the title. After that, he's going to break the pathetic record of Yuri and Slim Reaper just because he knows no one will stop him. Drops the mic and leaves. Alrighty, there we go. Draco is then interviewed and asked about the health of Samoa Joe. 
Draco confirms that Joe is on the mend and will be back soon. He's then asked about where he will go from here after losing the US title at SummerSlam. Sorry, the US title match at SummerSlam. He said that his path remains uncertain, but he will speak with Brock Lesnar about his future tonight. As he's about to step away, Brock Lesnar approaches him. Lesnar states that he understands Draco wants to move on from Roman Reigns and wants to become world champion again. However, the best he could do right now is a number one contendership next Raw to determine number one contender for the U.S. Championship. Draco says that that is fine to have another opportunity at the U.S. title. It's a belt that he respects and would be honored to hold if he wins. Thanks, Brock Lesnar, for a second chance. Good heads out. It then cuts to the arena, and out comes Brock Lesnar. He's doing a lot of stuff tonight. He's getting paid. As he announces when he gets in the ring that he's got a monumental moment ahead for Raw. He's invited the NXT champion to come out and say a few words, and to get the experience of what it's like on the main roster. He wants to motivate as well the lo this locker room to push themselves even further with Survivor Series coming up and the potential or the future war that's going to be waged against SmackDown Live. Therefore, he's calling out the Raw locker room to mobilize on the ramp. When they do, after that, Chris Hall comes down through the crowd and into the ring with the NXT title around his waist. He's got a wide smirk on his face as he takes the microphone from Brock Lesnar. He proceeds to state the Raw roster, this is Chris Hall talking, is looking at its future. The future of the business is in the ring. After he retains at NXT TakeOver Toronto, in the coming episodes, he'll be the longest reigning NXT champion of all time. That's better than Kevin Draco, Brayden McLaughlin, Tyler Bates, Santi Guerrero, and Scott Cole, and even the Universal Champion Blake Daniels. All proceeds to highlight that when he's done mopping through the trash of NXT, He'll come up to the main roster and put down the old dogs past their prime. Guys like Randy Orton, Rogue Killer, CM Punk, AJ Styles, and that old withered cripple, the one who just came back who thinks he's good, Cole Lee. He shakes his head and states that he looks at this roster now and it's sad how many old men past their prime there are. He finds that it's laughable that Ace can't even find his footing. Ox gets hurt, and Pete Dunn sits with his briefcase up his rear end when they should be dominating this pathetic roster. Finally, CM Punk comes forward, and he gets in the ring, only to take the microphone from Chris Hall, who just stands there with a cocky smile. Almost happy that someone finally stepped forward, Punk demands to know who the hell Chris Hall thinks he is. He got the blessing for the Raw GM to let him speak. So, Punk proceeds to say this quote, Allow me to remind you of who you are, you sawed-off pissant. I might not be the top dog of this brand, but I'm not going to put up with you running your little weasley mealy mouth, squeaking at us from the ring. Let me remind you of something. This brand was forged, has forged, rough little greenies who think they're too, and they're too good for their own good from NXT and forged them into legends of this business. Guys you named who held the NXT title were forged on Raw. For the most part, to become diamonds of the industry. Some of these men, who never were on NXT, still stand on this ramp unbroken and testaments to the hard work and dedication it takes to make it. Some might not be decorated world champions, but have spent years fighting for every amount of success they can find. You want to talk trash? Put that NXT title on the line. And back those words up. He cans the mic back to Chris Hall, who just looks down at the mic, and then proceeds to spit on the shoes, the boots of CM Punk before taking the, or before lifting the microphone up. Punk just glares at him and doesn't move while Hall says, It would be my... How do you put it? Honor. <laughs> Before calling for a referee to come down to the ring to ring the bell for an NXT title match. So, 
Punk's not gonna take any crap from Hall. Hall talks some trash to the Raw roster, and let's get into the match next. So it is time for the semi-main event, and the match is a historic one. The NXT Champion Chris Hall defending his title against CM Punk, the self-proclaimed best wrestler in the world. As, oh, Chris Hall tries to start off white hot with some offense, but no. CM Punk dodged it. No. Chris Hall tried to keep advantage, but no. CM Punk turning the tide. The veteran trying to go for a big clothesline, but Chris Hall caught him. Chris Hall using his youth and agility to press on as the hardcore champion looks on on the outside. The rest of the locker room headed to the back as Punk now taking on Chris Hall. Blasts him with the clothesline finally. Hitting a hard shot there that seems to slow Chris Hall, but doesn't stop him as Chris Hall continues to press on. Oh, but CM Punk got to his feet. Picks him up. Backbreaker there. CM Punk and Daniel Bryan. Team becoming known as Dishonor. Doing whatever it takes to win. He's been under some pressure from NXT. From NXT talent specifically. Chris Hall, though. 15 episodes and counting in his second reign as champion all time. He's at 25 episodes. Sorry, 20, 24 episodes. There's a hip toss there. As NXT champion. Becoming close to the record, which is 28. As longest reigning NXT champion of all time, which is a three-way tie, to my knowledge, between McLaughlin, Scott Cole, and I believe Sante Guerrero. Maybe one other. As now, Punk. Picks him up, backbreaker there. As these two go back and forth, Punk looking to teach him a lesson. So now he's got Chris Hall tied up in a surfboard, wasting no time trying to go for a submission and wear down the back of Chris Hall, who flips out of it. Goes for a cover, but no. See him, Punk kicks out. And oh, Chris Hall finally tagged him with that running corkscrew. And he taunts the crowd before going for a cover. Whoa. No, one and a half. Chris Hall declaring basically a one-man war against the old locker room. It's work! A run is gone! Power bomb by CM Punk to the NXT champion as he went at it well scouted. What a move from the best of the world as he goes for another limb targeting hold, twisting and contorting the foot of Chris Hall. Much to the liking of Daniel Bryan on the outside. CM Punk targets the leg there even further. And now he's going to go for a submission upon the legs and the upper back as look at this hold. He is wearing down Chris Hall in every way possible, trying to push the NXT champion to the absolute limit. But Chris Hall works his way out of it. Punk getting to his feet as well. Chris Hall, kick right there to the gut, turning the tide. Oh! Oh, nope. Punk counters with a cross body as he caught the legs, dropped him down right in front of him and said thank you very much for landing on him with a cross body before going to the top row. The best in the world drops the elbow but misses now as Chris Hall rolled out of the way of the tribute to the macho man Randy Savage sending Punk into the turnbuckles. As now Chris Hall driving his boot into the stomach of Punk, but Punk caught it, sweeps the legs up from under him and took back control of the match. And now, for the second time, going for the surfboard once again, trying to target the back of Chris Hall, who's yelling in pain, but he flips out of it again, goes for a cover, but another kick out by Punk. Keeps the momentum going, and a drop to all there, but Chris Hall with a kip up, eats a knife edge chop though. Despite the flashy move to get to his feet, Punk Irish whips him to the corner, goes to the knee, nobody's home, it's Chris Hall's sidestep, and now Chris Hall, front flip, neck breaker there, cover to put him away, one. Two! Kick out at two! Punk stays alive! So close for the NXT champion to send a very powerful message to the rest of the locker room. As now he's just laying in the boots. Chris Hall's got the yard. Peeling and twisting it and contorting it back before landing! Those knees to the spinal cord of CM Punk. 
And there's a slap across the face. Punk seems rattled. Iris whipping him out of the ring. Chris Hall. For the moment, the fans in attendance and at home watching can breathe a sigh of relief. There cannot be a pinfall or submission on the outside. However, there is countouts. Punk brings him back inside the ring. Punk getting the fans into it. Punk's going to take a leap of faith. Oh, my gosh. Super kick there by Chris Hall. However, Punk, by pure instinct, sweeps the leg out from under Chris Hall. When Chris Hall was trying to lay in the offense, and a Punk. Oh, sit down. Bio driver, Punk, sickly, it's the end to put him to sleep. Ladies and gentlemen, get on your feet. Go to sleep. Chris Hall, new NXT champion, cover one, two, three, no. Punk can't believe it as he looks at the referee in shock. Wow. Chris Hall stays alive. Punk looking to rectify and show Daniel Bryan as well that the loss on NXT in the tag match was a fluke as there's a crossbody off the middle rope by Punk. Running the ropes, leg drop once. Running the ropes a second time. Here it comes a second. Oh, across the throat of Chris Hall. Cover yet again to put him away. One, two, kick out at two. Now Punk, ooh, eats a forearm there. Chris Hall gets, or sends him flying backwards, picks him up into a brain buster. As just like that, Chris Hall turns the tide and shuts down the momentum of Sea of Punk like a freight train hitting several brick walls. It's just a collision, a crash course collision to a halt as now Chris Hall, Irish whips Sea of Punk into the corner. But no way, Punk counters Iris whipping him across the ring. Chris Hall backflips out of the corner. Punk the blasts him with a clothesline, shutting him down. A moment of reprieve for Punk as he looked to pour it on. But Hall turns it around. Spinning clothesline. No, Punk caught him with a spinning kick. And now lays him with several strikes before delivering a backbreaker there to Chris Hall. Oh, but he's gonna pick him up a second time. Here it comes high, kick there. So Chris Hall who's rocked. Cover, one, two, kick out at two. So close, but yet so far, Punk though gonna go for the Anaconda Vice. Anaconda Vice, but Chris Hall with good ring awareness. In good awareness in general, delivers several knees to the back and just connected with a famous sir there to put down Punk, picks him up. Oh, oh my gosh, what a backbreaker there. That's now Chris Hall, size him up, kick right to the jaw. Chris Hall to retain one, no one and a half. These two are going back and forth with explosive offense. And it's on full display. It's all went to the top. Punk grabs him and makes him take the Ric Flair signature bump. For delivering a spinning heel kick. Iris whipping him against the ropes. Drop kick once. Looking for it twice. Yes, he's got him. And now a neck breaker follows it up. Connects on Chris Hall. See him bump. Picks him up, Iris whipping him into the corner. Hall's in trouble. Knee smash into the corner, but Hall sidesteps yet again. Skywalker. But by all the punk two. Kick out at two. Punk stays alive. As Hall is in shock, but recovers quickly. From his state of shock, delivering an elbow. To the face of CM Punk, which seems to have busted op open, causing a laceration right on the forehead. As Punk is running red. And now a seated abdominal stretch by Chris Hall, slowing down the pace of the match to his benefit, getting a breather. While Punk is in serious pain, feeling his pectoral muscles get pulled in an attempt to strain them. But Punk fending it off, putting himself back to his feet and delivering a hip toss there, shutting down Chris Hall. Hall 
counters to the jaw rattler though, and looks for the running corkscrew, but missed. Punk picks him up for the end. Go to Slay for the second time. Cover to win the NXT title war. Two. Down. So close, but yet so far for the best in the world. Both men pushing each other to the absolute limit. To the breaking point as there is the final knee smash attempt. The third time and it finally connected Boo to the, to the face of the seated Chris Hall. As that Punk just stomping away on Chris Hall. Spinning heel kick there. As Hall struggling to even get to his feet. With Punk just pouring everything he can into every strike, overwhelming offense is his idea. As Chris Hall bounces off the ropes and delivers the corkscrew maneuver, but no. Punk kicked out of a cover. As now Chris Hall grabbing the arm, stomping away at every ligament that he can upon CM Punk breaking down the man who has been wearing him down gradually with overwhelming offense. Punk and Hall. Pushing each other. Whose body will quit first? As Chris all goes to attack the legs, but Punk worked his way up to his feet. Punk now in the corner, beckoning, practically pleading, willing Chris all to his feet. And now here it comes, drop to hold there. Punk looking for a submission. Can he pull it off? Goes for the leg. Oh, never mind. He did not go for a submission, but he targeted that braced up leg. Oh, leg drop off the top rope to the legs, but no. Rolls to his feet. Knee smash right there. A Harley race knee strike, but Chris Hall rolls out of the way of the follow-up. Axel got outside the ring, got back inside the ring, only to be hit with a series of strikes from Punk. Punk popping off, teeing off upon the NXT champion. Picking him up, putting him up out in the top turnbuckle. Looking to go high risk, high reward, potentially for a Pepsi plunge if he so desires. But no, he's going to change it up. Instead, he's up on the top turnbuckles, perched above a superplex back inside the ring. See a punk with a follow up cover. One, two, kick out at two near fall. Punk looks absolutely gassed in this fast-paced matchup as he is oh so desperately trying to just tax and wear off the champion. And oh, look for a springboard. Close line there, super kick. When he was trying to recover, Chris Hall taking advantage. One, no, what a half. See a Punk tried another high flying maneuver and it cost him dearly. Chris Hall now sizing him up. Here it comes, ladies and gentlemen, on Raw. Get to your feet. Destino connects. Carver to retain his title. One, two, three. Chris Hall retains the NXT title in a fast paced matchup against the best in the world, CM Punk who tried to push him beyond his breaking point. But in the end, Chris Hall is still the NXT Champion. I wonder if that's also a message to Ty Noble, who's on Raw, as well as trying to get an opportunity at Chris Hall's NXT title in the future. But for now, Chris Hall has Arthur Rex and Tony Ramirez to look forward to on NXT TakeOver Toronto as of what's confirmed right now. The NXT Champion makes a statement here to the locker room, both with his words and with his actions, as he is still NXT Champion of the World. Stands tall here in the semi-main event. What a win for the young upcoming star. Whether you love him or hate him in NXT, he's victorious. After the match, Chris Hall goes to the back and is interviewed where he says that all the has-beens like CM Punk need to get out of the way. The future has arrived. This tonight was their wake-up call, but destiny, no matter what, arrives on time all the same. And what's destiny? Chris Hall. Brace for impact because when he's done on NXT, the company will be forever changed. Noted.
Lesnar then proceeds to call Pete Dunn, Mr. Money in the Bank, James Arlington, and Tyler Baden in his office, where he informs them that all three of them will compete in a fatal four-win match for the opportunity to fight Blake Danis at Clash of Champions in the next match. Tyler Bates starts to complain about why the briefcase holder is in the match in the first place, but James Arlington wastes no time picking up a chair and smacks Pete Dunne in the face with it before he ensures, or well, he also ensures that he grabs the briefcase and cracks Pete Dunne in the face with it as well before security running and grab him. Pete Dunne is out cold. Lesnar sits back and watches the carnage unfold. Dunne is out cold, and Lesnar informs Arlington and Bates to get into the ring. He'll decide what to do next, whether it's a triple threat or whether it's a fatal four-way. Still, Bate doesn't look too happy about Arlington's actions, but Arlington just says, whatever it takes to be on top. That's what you have to learn, kid. Good hard lesson there. And unfortunately for Pete Dunn, it looks like he got taken out. The show then cuts to Blake Daniels in the ring before the main event as Lesnar continues to check on the status of Pete Dunne. And Daniels is standing in the ring where he addresses Ace, Universal Champion, compliments the young star on his ability and talent. However, the quest to be the best won't be stopped. Daniels looks to break two records on this run, the longest world title reign and the most episodes as a world champion. Just then, Roman Reigns and the Bloodline come out. Roman uh, lets Paul Heyman do the talking at first, to Blake Daniels, where Heyman highlights that everything Roman is doing is to benefit Raw, while Daniels is only benefiting himself. Roman is trying to build stars like Ty Noble and the Usos, while Blake Daniels almost buried Ace at SummerSlam. Blake Daniels is the villain of Raw. He does point at the cameras, though, and says that if Ace ever puts his hand on Roman Reigns again, he will be officially buried and be sent to catering, though. Paul Heyman continues and says that disrespecting the head of Raw's table is a cardinal sin. Ace, don't believe him? Ask Ty Noble. Ty Noble raises an eyebrow but stays silent among the bloodline. Daniels laughs at these remarks and says that Roman Reigns... If you're done playing house among your family members and non-family members, are you actually going to do something? Or are you just going to waste my time? Roman has a big following. From what it looks like four individuals, but nothing substantial to show for. It. There's only one man that Daniels wants to face, and that's not Roman Reigns. It's the man who's 2-0 against him. He wants to face Sante Guerrero. So he'll beat whoever the in wins the main event tonight at Clash of Champions, and then Sante will get his match on the following pay-per-view. Roman Reigns frowns and laughs at this, takes the microphone from Paul Heyman, where he says that Sante is, is as pathetic as Samoa Joe, Kevin Draco, Ace, and these mid-tier newcomers like Chris Hall and Ryan Trapp. The camera flashes to Ty Noble again, who stays quiet as he's also a newcomer. Daniels asks for Roman to just get to the point now, and that now that Paul Stooge is out of the way. Roman Reigns says that he'll try and keep it simple for this terrible paperweight world champion to understand. He's not asking Lesnar to get in the line behind AJ Styles and Cole Lee, who are fighting next Raw. He's telling the champion to his face, whoever walks out of Clash of Champions with the title, he's got next. Screw Cold Lee, screw AJ Styles, screw Sante Guerrero. He's beaten AJ and Cold Lee's washed up. And Sante isn't gonna do a damn thing. That's why he's not even here tonight because he can't even come out the next night after barely surviving a beating from Samuel Armstrong does these quotation marks. Roman Reigns proceeds to offer out a hand to Blake Daniels, who goes to take it, but Roman pulls his hand away. The Bloodline leave the ring laughing, or well, at least the Usos are, and Paul Heyman. Ty Noble doesn't really look too interested, and Roman winks before saying, You know better than anyone, champ. The good guys always finish last. 
The Bloodline heads up the ramp and leaves the champion in the ring before a commercial break. When we go back, it's the main event. James Arlington, Tyler Bates, and one other man who is returning from a minor injury, the Apex Predator Randy Orton. We go to that match in the main event as Tyler, or sorry, Pete Dunne has ruled that he cannot compete tonight, so Mr. Money in the Bank is out of action. Go to the triple threat match. So Randy Orton is revealed to be the third man in the match. Tyler Bate and Randy Orton are already out here, but now making his way to the ring. Ladies and gentlemen, it is James, the Irish icon, Arlington. The man who is feeling right now that he is bulletproof as he makes his way to the ring with an opportunity to fight once again for the world title. For those who don't know his resume, he is one of two men to main event two WrestleManias in his career. He won the Royal Rumble of Season 8, main evented Season 8 and 9. Walked in the challenger in Season 8, walked in as the champion of Season 9. He's a two-time WWE champion as displayed there, 44 episodes. Both title reigns happened last season. Held the belt for 44 out of the 55 episodes of the season. One episode as Universal Champion, 35 as a two-time Intercontinental Champion, two-time Hardcore Champion in eight episodes. He's ranked 16th all-time with just only seven title reigns to his name and his career. He is bad. He is the Irish icon, James Arlington. He'll do whatever it takes to be the man who stands on top of the world. Rest assured, that is the man you're looking at, for those who don't know him. As now Randy Orton, Tyler Bate, and James Arlington go to war. First pinfall or submission wins and gets an opportunity at the Universal Champion and Clash of Champions. Randy Orton clotheslining James Arlington out of the ring. Randy Orton holds the record for most hardcore title reigns at seven. He hells or er, Last time he held the title was back in season seven. It is still a record that stands today. An impressive record indeed. And he has spent every all 10 seasons on the red brand. He is the most senior out of this brand specifically than anyone else. It's Tyler Bate seems to have become the protege. The man learning underneath the tutelage of James Arlington. That's the story going into here as well as Arlington doing whatever it takes and passing on that lesson to Tyler Bates for this match by taking out Pete Dunne, one of Tyler Bates' rivals from NXT days. It's also the Mr. Money in the Bank of Raw as Tyler Bate and James Arlington actually clash. No alliances in this match. Orton, what I thought would be a two-on-one situation is more like a triple threat match. Although I won't be shocked if there's some team-ups uppercut by Tyler Bates as he goes after James Arlington. Arlington sends him into the corner, close line there. Randy Orton back inside the ring, and now it's the Luthez press on. Delivers some strikes to him. Meanwhile, Tyler Bates counters a shot by Orton. The kick there, Orton suckers him in and drops him down with that beautiful toe hold. And now Bates gets the knee driven into his lungs. Orton now perched upon the middle rope, feeling the tide of momentum has shifted into his favor. As now he turns right around, uppercut there. Orton has never held a world title, neither has Tyler Bates. Both men would love to become one-time world champions of Clash of Champions, and James Arlington wants to reclaim championship gold at Clash of Champions as he took out James, or sorry, he took out Randy Orton and... Tyler Bate, James Arlington on a roll. Looking for a kick to the back, but Orton counters out of the way. Drops him down, slams him down to the canvas. Great recovery after the Florida Keys connected upon him, but James Arlington kicked to the top of the head, turning the tide, twirl the work around of there. As he takes back control, cover to win the match, to go to the main event of Clash of Champions. No kick out there. Sorry, semi-main event. If I remember. Nope, it is the main event. It's slated as the main event. It's crazy. It's bait. Cracks James Arlington across the head there with an insiguri, but Randy Orton's right there with the Russian leg sweep, taking out Tyler Bate before turning his attention to James Arlington, the one that Bate took out prior. 
And now, Randy Orton, neck breaker, cover right afterwards, but Tyler Bate is right there. Randy Orton trying to deliver a series of forearms, but missing it there. Shots right there. Quite literally beating Tyler Bate down to his knees. Is now Orton. Irish whipping him into the corner four at once. Twice? No. Bate counters. Turns the tide. And Bate taking it to Randy Orton, the apex predator in trouble. As Bate stomps away on the chest of Randy Orton. Picking him up here. And oh, oh, the rolling kick and that's Orton. Orton's down. Cover no. James Arlington turns on a run back. Stop. Tyler Bate up on his shoulders and a fireman's carry. But what a move from Tyler Bate. What a kick as he just took out James Arlington. One, two, no. Orton's right there to save it. And oh, wait, Orton's got him. Here it comes. The vintage draping DDT by the Apex Predator, the Viper. Feeling it tonight, turns right around. Hammer lock DDT by James Arlington. Arlington feeling it tonight now. As Orton rolls out of the ring, he's got his protege, the one he is mentoring in the ring. But Bates got his number, Tyler 97. Two, no. James Arlington kicks out but rolls to his feet. James Arlington tries to put him down. Shoulder tackle once. Twice. Lands again. Oh, wait, Bate sends him over the ropes. Arlington, though, quick to scale the rungs. Going up to the top turnbuckle. Bate doesn't see him. Accent on there. Arlington trying to fire up the crowd. RKO. RKO by Orton. One, two, no. It's not over. As the Apex Predator, the Viper struck at the perfect time when Arlington thought he had all the momentum in the world. Wow. And Wade Bay takes out with a Tyler 97 one. No. Arlington breaks up the pin and subsequently the referee. As he picks up Randy Orton. Randy Orton hammered away with a series of elbows right to the jaw of the busted open James Arlington. As now Orton, oh, fist to the face. The solid punches. And now Orton, ladies and gentlemen, the apex predator, the Viper, sliced him up and hits him with a stiff uppercut there. Orton concocting a plan, but oh, Arlington's up on his feet. Stomps Orton into the corner and then delivers a light drop on the bottom rope. Wow. Arlington turns the tide. The Irish icon looking to punch his ticket to another main event show, but no, Orton kicks out. And now a drop kick attempt. No. Orton sidestepped out of the way. Shot right there by Bate. Bate now. Irish whipping Orton out of the ring. Looking to put away the man who not only failed at winning the United States title at SummerSlam, but also potentially surpassing him is the perspective of Tyler Bate and also his mentor, James Arlington. Cover. Looking to secure the victory. No. Kick out of one and a half. For Bate, this could be huge. For Arlington, it could be an opportunity to climb back to the top of the mountain. And for Orton, this could be one last shot at trying to get a world title match in his career. As he is up there in age. Oh, elbow across the chest. As now Orton scales the rungs going to the top turnbuckle. Here we go. Orton looking to put him away. Diving elbow to the back of the skull of Tyler Bate after the tag team team up by Orton and Arlington. Cover two. No. Kick out of two. Orton broken up anyways. He was taking his own time to recover, recuperate, and recharge his, his body. And now, oh, Orton looking at shoulder thrust. Arlington out of the ring, but no, wait, Arlington caught him, only for Orton to retaliate and deliver a neck breaker there, cover one, two, kick out at two, Arlington stays alive, Orton's frustration showing, as Bay just wiped him out to win the match, one, two, three, no, Randy Orton stays alive, solid kick to the back, Orton takes it, drop kick there, 
He absorbed the pain and brought the pain to Tyler Bate by dropping him down with a drop kick. Tyler Bate, though, doesn't stay down for long as he delivers an uppercut. Roll through move by Orton delivered RKO out of nowhere for the second time. War. No, Bate kicks out as Arlington got to the ring if it wasn't for Bate's resilience ability to persevere and power through we could be looking at the number one contender for the universal title but there's the sweeping DDT by Randy Orton as blood spills from the skull of Arlington in a torrent onto the mat and onto his chest he is bleeding furiously drop kick there by Orton to Tyler Bate, and now he's slicing up James Arlington for the end. Looking to put him away. Looking to win the match. RKO, no. Arlington counters. Drop kick there. Arlington turns it around. Orton's back on his feet. Close line once, twice. Orton's feeling it. Oh, twirl away. Around him by Tyler. Sorry, not Tyler Bate. James Arlington. However, Orton rolls to his feet. Forearm there to the bloody gash wounds of James Arlington on his face. Arlington though picks him up with the fireman's carries. Got him, tie breaker there, dropped him on his knee. Cover, no kick out by Orton. And now, James Arlington scales the rungs despite Orton being on the outside. Arlington's gonna take a leap of faith to the outside. Oh, a shot right there off the top rope. Meanwhile, B trying to lay it in on Arlington. He sends his opportunity, knocking on the door as these two go back and forth on the outside of the ring. Spinning heel kick missed. Bates gonna take advantage, slams Arlington against the edge of the apron. Orton getting to his feet behind them while Bates and Arlington go to war. Bates sends Arlington back inside the ring. Oh, Orton sending Bates to the edge of the apron. Arlington pops right up, only to eat a drop kick in the middle of the ring. Orton delivers a elbow right across the chest of James Arlington and now Arlington in the middle of the ring is in a bad way he's in a bad way oh Randy Orton sizing him up on the ropes draping DDT on the gash wound yet again Orton surveying the crowd but he doesn't see bait from behind bait from behind Tyler 97 cover war pill pill oh my Tyler Bate picked his spot from behind to pick up the win. Tyler Bate with a look of relief on his face just punched his ticket to become the number one contender for the Universal Championship. He will face Blake Daniels in the main event of Night of Champions, Clash of Champions, whatever we're calling it. Congratulations to him. Amazing job and a monumental opportunity for Tyler Bates. Can he pull it off at Clash of Champions? Tune in in four episodes to find out. This will be quick, ladies and gentlemen, but after the match, Arlington looks visibly frustrated on the outside as there he's he was handed a towel by the referee to try and stop the bleeding. He looks visibly frustrated while Bate grabs the microphone. He states that he's had setback after setback, but at Clash of Champions, he has a chance of a lifetime. He'll apply all the lessons that he's learned from Arlington and do whatever it takes to walk out Universal Champion. Blake Daniels has a line foreman, but he shouldn't look past the man who can ruin his plans in four episodes. Bate drop, drops the mic and heads up to the ramp where a frustrated Arlington is waiting for him. Arlington, though, plays along and raises his arm to close out the show. That'll do it, ladies and gentlemen, for Monday Night Raw, episode 23. Tune in to the other episodes that follow to see the build-up to Clash of Champions and NXT TakeOver Toronto. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Leave a like, subscribe to the channel, of course, if you choose. But most importantly, as always, suit up, Matt Army. I will see you all next time.